So it's been a while since I recorded last. Um, as you can see, we're in a little bit of a different setting. Last time I had, I did a full YouTube video, uh, we were at our house in Maryland. That house did not have a garage. This and this Land Cruiser was very much outside in the middle of the driveway. Um, we've since moved to Colorado, which we're very happy about. Um, honestly, I'm not a big fan of the East Coast. Nothing against the people who live there. I'm just a desert rat who grew up playing in mountains and Maryland is somewhat the opposite of both of those things. It's pretty flat, it's humid, and it's low in elevation, so I'm not not super fond of that. Um, so doing great in terms of um, mental health since moving. Uh, being able to look out my bedroom window and seeing the Rocky Mountains has been a huge boost on that. Um, additionally, we have since welcomed a third um, child to our family, so I'm um, I'm actually on parental leave for that right now, which has been great. Um, so, family's gotten bigger. Uh, my addiction to vehicles has not changed all that much. Uh, so, I realized as I started busting into this project that I hadn't recorded the first part of it, so I apologize for that. I'll try to do better in the future. Um, you may also notice the lighting is not the best. Um, I'm doing this in my garage and I will admit to being a little bit shy about recording in front of um, in front of my neighbors. It was always something I struggled with when I was in Maryland. Being able to close my garage helps increase my confidence on this a whole lot better. Um, I will admit the lighting's not the best and I plan to do more to improve that in the future, especially since just being able to see what I'm doing better is better for me in terms of my actual work, not just in terms of recording. Uh, so I guess I'll, I'll do a little bit of a walk around on what I've um, accomplished on the, the rig so far. Uh, we'll be able to, or I'll kind of go into detail on what my plans are and then I'll kind of get into it. So it should come as a surprise to no one, but unfortunately um, I am not super competent when it comes to my recording skills, still getting my equipment figured out. I've ended up, up losing a pretty significant amount of my footage from yesterday. So different day, we're re-recording some stuff. Fortunately, all I lost was just me explaining the project. Didn't get a whole lot of work actually done on the vehicle, um, which um, shouldn't come as a huge surprise. Um, I'm, I got super excited about getting the project done, realized yesterday as I was trying to work on stuff that I didn't do enough research into um, into what I'm working on and so wasn't able to make any progress. Um, still got a lot of research I gotta, gotta do, but um, in the meantime, I can explain kind of what the plan is, what I've done so far on the, the build. So hopefully, um, at this point, you guys have seen or at least um, are at least somewhat familiar with um, this Land Cruiser that I am currently working on. It is my 1987 Toyota Land Cruiser HJ60. Um, it's a Nicaraguan import, which is kind of cool because that makes it a left-hand drive as opposed to um, the vast majority of diesel Land Cruisers, especially of this vintage that you're gonna find, which are gonna be right-hand drive as opposed to left-hand drive. Um, I wanted a left-hand drive vehicle um, I know there are a lot of people who find it kind of nifty to have a right-hand drive vehicle. I'm actually one of those normally. However, since I do want this to be at least somewhat daily drivable, I need it to be left-hand drive because I work, um, I have, when I go to work, I have to show my ID coming in every day um, and trying to lean across and crank down the, um, the left-hand window, um, especially in a manual, window vehicle like 60 series Land Cruisers are would have been a pain every day and so left-hand drive is what I wanted um, so what I'm what I've done so far um, since the last time I recorded is I have torn out pretty much the entire interior um, you can see it's just kind of a heap of I've got wires and tools and stuff, which I'll get into why those are there in a minute. But I've torn out pretty much the entire interior um, and moved it over here. Um, additionally, um, 
as I showed in one of um, one of the platforms I've got, um, one of the issues that I've had with this, or what, one of the issues that this Land Cruiser had when I bought it, was a gigantic oil leak coming from in here. Um, I can barely see the edge of the gasket that I replaced. So it was the timing cover, uh, timing cover gasket um, that was leaking. I did replace it. I still don't know necessarily how well that repair worked because the minute after I replaced it, as I was putting coolant in it, um, the or coolant started leaking basically all along all along here the, um, this so the oil cooler covers what that part is called um, it had a giant crack um, I suspect it was because um, rather than being filled with coolant the engine had been filled with water um, and Nicaragua doesn't freeze very often so they don't really care about antifreeze and as a result of that when it did freeze here um, that it, water expanded and then cracked causing that damage um, I replaced that oil cooler cover however um, I don't obviously I didn't do a great job because it's still leaking coolant from all around the edge of the part um, which means that I either didn't seat the gasket correctly um, didn't tighten things down correctly or any number of other issues um, I'm bl blaming myself on this one but at the end of the day what it comes down to is I am pretty much done messing with this motor um, it is an indirect injection, um, naturally aspirated diesel, which means it's never going to make a ton of power. Um, and it's also going to be susceptible to issues regarding um, elevation change, which is pretty, pretty worthless in the area I'm at because here in Colorado Springs, which is where we're at now, um, we're sitting at about 6,000 feet in elevation. Um, and anywhere that I would want to go off-roading at is going to be anywhere from one to at one to ten thousand almost um, feet. I guess technically eight thousand feet um, higher in elevation than where we're at right now. That's a lot of elevation change, and that means a lot of tuning as I'm trying to get it going. Unless I want to just dump smoke all over the road, which people tend to not like. Um, additionally. Um, the less air you get, the more heating issues you have, which is a problem with indirect injection vehicle or diesels just by design. Um, they're not very thermodynamic, dynamically efficient. They put out a lot of extra heat, especially in the head area of the, ve or of the engine, um, which is also, by the way, one of the reasons why you have to be very careful when you're putting boost on these engines because boost introduces more heat, which can cause it to be more likely to melt down. None of those things are ideal. Um, so instead of trying to work with a um, decades old diesel that I've had nothing but trouble with, um, I am going to be swapping it with a more modern Cummins R2.8, um, which is a crate motor that Cummins has been making for the last several years. Um, specifically designed for engine swaps. Um, it's a great little engine, puts out about 161 horsepower, 310 foot-pounds of torque, which is perfect for my application. Um, even the stock diesel motors in 80 series Land Cruisers only put out about that much power and they're, on, they're in a heavier vehicle, so it, it should work great for me. Um, additionally, I've been told by multiple people who have them in their 60 series that um, it gets pretty decent gas mileage, uh, or I guess fuel economy um, would be more accurate, um, which is great for me. I'm, I say this not because I am worried about the money it's gonna cost for fuel, I'm looking at it as uh, more off-road range. So a lot of people will try and justify a swap like that just because of the fuel economy. It's gonna be very difficult to ever make your money back doing that kind of, um, that kind of engine swap just because none of those are cheap and um, the savings in fuel you're going to get back are going to be extremely difficult to to ever catch up with that cost. That's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it or fuel economy being a motivation for me is because that means fewer fuel stops um, as I'm going on trips. So 
Um, and also the further I can go off road and in back country without having to worry about, um, without worrying about where my next um, fill up is gonna come from. So in preparation for that swap, I have started getting ready to rewire the, um, the entire vehicle. So as you can see, coming over here, um, just looking at the battery cable situation here, there's all sorts of jankery. Um, that is the case throughout the entire Land Cruiser. Um, various things have been cut, various things have been removed. None of it's been done in a very safe manner. Um, so for instance, stock, the stock stereo was removed and they just cut the, the wires off and left them dangling here. Um, yeah, that, and I'm not fond of that. Besides the fact that um, it doesn't look great, it's a safety hazard. Um, I am about to put a ton of money into this Land Cruiser to do the engine swap. I'm not at all interested in um, it potentially burning to the ground. So in order to negate that risk as well as um, improve the functionality of the vehicle by restoring function to the various things that have been disconnected, um, I am rewiring the vehicle. So as you can see, I've got wiring harness here. It's a painless performance um, wiring harness specifically for CJ Jeeps from 1974 and older. I got it for Lemon Lime, my 1958 CJ5. Realized I don't actually need to rewire Lemon Lime, but I've held onto the harness. Hopefully it'll come in handy now. Looks at, from what I've been able to see, um, Painless does include plenty of wire length for, for me to be able to get throughout the entire vehicle, which is perfect, even on this, which is almost, it looks almost twice as long as what Lemon Lime would be. It's probably not actually, um, and I'll have to look that up. But anyway, plenty of wire length by the looks of it for what I need to do. Um, and with any luck, um, it'll solve my electrical issues more or less. Um, this is what I have realized I have not done enough research on because even though I have kind of looked through the wiring diagrams in the factory service ma manual, um, it's not had nearly as much, um, or sorry, I've not gotten it into nearly as much detail as I realized I need to to figure out things like what all of these plugs and harnesses go to and so on and so forth and how to wire like how to splice into those is necessary um, because i do want to keep the toyota factory harnesses as much as possible that allows me to switch out parts so say my turn signal switch goes out a couple years down the line i don't have to try and splice in a new one i can just plug and play kind of thing I want to try and do that as much as possible um, so i need to figure out those um, i need to figure out those overall, um, what should we call it? those overall wiring issues. In addition to tearing out the interior, you can see I've also torn out basically everything in the dash, specifically HVAC system. Um, so the issue that, uh, that I'm trying to rectify there is before I ever purchased the Land Cruiser and from what the previous owner was telling me before it even actually made it to US soil, um, all of the HVAC components that were under the hood, so be like a heater core, air conditioning compressor, condenser, evaporator, like all that kind of stuff um, was ripped out and stolen, uh, which is unfortunate because those are expensive parts. Um, but what it boils down to is I am not going to try and um, figure out how to source stock Toyota stuff, especially since I'm sw swapping engines realize it's probably not worth it. What I'm gonna do instead is get an aftermarket system, something like a vintage air, old air, just one of those universal um, heat, heating and AC kits um, to replace that with. Um, I am still looking into trying to replicate the stock setup where it's got a rear heater that sits under the passenger seat. Uh, I think it would be cool to maybe take one of the under, under dash units um, that one of those company makes companies make and get both heating and air conditioning to the rear seats. Um, from the measurements I've been able to take, there does seem to be like there's enough room for that to sit underneath um, the passenger seat here. We'll have to see um, what that comes down to um, once I actually get the seats back in and also I'm able to 
take better measurements. Um, additionally, um, it's also going to depend on how efficient the the front heating and air conditioning system is because if it's putting out enough heat and enough cold air um, to meet my needs, it may not even be necessary to, to make that addition. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's what's going on here. Um, I'm not actually planning on doing the HVAC anytime soon, but it, it, removing it did make my job of trying to do the rewire a whole lot easier. So um, just having that not in the way um, was kind of the idea there. Um, as you can see, I have fed the um, I fed the wiring harness through the firewall there. Um, I think that's actually where the um, the hosing from the heater core comes through. If the heater core were there, um, I'm not stuck on that idea as uh, being where I'm going to keep my harness at or keep my harness fed through. Um, it was more just to figure out if I have enough wiring length from front to back, which definitely do. Uh, but yeah, so unfortunately I don't have a whole lot of more work that I can do on the Land Cruiser at this very moment because I still need to do a whole lot of research to figure out how to um, marry the painless harness and the, um, the factory stuff to actually get a good functioning setup. Um, but um, I did want to share my progress so far as well as get back into the habit of actually recording this stuff um, because the, the more I leave it off, the, or the longer I, I leave it off, the longer uh, or I, the less likely it would be that I'd actually get back to it at all. Um, I, do, I do enjoy recording this kind of stuff. Um, I do also enjoy doing this kind of work. So actually doing it um, even if I didn't have a whole lot to, sh to show is that kind of first step that I'm hoping will build some better habits on that. Um, additionally, I'm hoping, hoping to get my technical issues resolved um, so that way I'm not fighting the equipment because originally I, I tried twice to record off of this GoPro here because um, it's got the, the, handy, um, the handy little hand holder tripod thing. It lost about 20 minutes of footage. Both times are recorded, so I'm not not very happy with that. I'm gonna have to try and figure out what's going on with that and why it's not recording correctly, why it's not saving all of the information it should be. Um, but yeah, so in the meantime, um, I hope to um, I hope to get some more content out, and yeah, um, yeah. So hopefully. Hopefully I'll be able to keep on that, keep on that train and um, not fall off this time.